Rise from your grave. Oh, Snake. 20 years ago, this was the best that mobile gaming had to offer. Sure, by today's standards it seems stupidly simplistic, but this game helped a lot of people get through hours of boredom when they would have otherwise had to stare at a bathroom stall door, pay attention during a class, or talk to another human being about their problems. But as cell phones progressed, so did the games they offered in complexity and scope. And with the introduction of smartphones, mobile games' popularity grew exponentially. This is due mostly to their ease of play and ease of accessibility. However, they would never really be seen as real games and always be overshadowed by their mainstream counterparts in handheld gaming made by companies like Nintendo and Sony and a bunch of other companies that tried their hand at it and essentially failed. This lack of recognition and respect for mobile games generally stems from the sentiment that mobile games are designed to bring revenue in for the companies that design them. This is due to the fact that they're generally built to be highly addictive and their heavy use of microtransactions during gameplay. And while I do agree with the idea that most mobile games are developed to create revenue streams for companies, there are a few games that I do enjoy playing on the mobile phone, such as Doom, Doom 2, Final Fantasy, Grand Theft Auto, Stardew Valley, and Minecraft. However, I rarely find playing these games enjoyable because of one simple fact. I have to use my screen to control my characters. I do not enjoy putting my thumbs all over my screen. I need a better way. So for me, the search is on to go through a sea of peripherals that have been provided by different companies to turn my mobile phone into more of a mobile gaming device. And first up is the Razer Jungle Cat. Now, Razer is generally a PC peripheral company that makes mid-range gaming peripherals and I personally use their Black Widow keyboard and I've never had any issues with it, so I'm actually pretty interested to see what they did here. Now, I know what you're thinking right when you saw this. Oh, hey, they're trying to turn your mobile phone into a Switch. And yes, that's kind of the aesthetic they're going for. Actually, that's exactly the aesthetic they're going for. However, when I review this, I'm not reviewing it as mobile gaming versus Nintendo Switch games platform. I'm just comparing it as ease of use and portability and functionality. Does this enhance my mobile gaming experience? Now, keep in mind, there are different things that I take in consideration when reviewing these. One is cost. Right off the bat, the Jungle Cat is 99 US dollars, so that's already half the amount of a Nintendo Switch Lite. So that's a pretty high price point just to be putting onto your phone and carrying around, so I don't really know what to expect from this thing. The next is ease of use. How easy is this to use? Not only how easy is it to set up, but how easy is it to repeat the experience after I turn it off and put it away in my pocket? Is it a constant wrestling match to get this thing to work with all the games? Do I constantly have to remap buttons? Is it constantly picking my own button profiles? Or did they take into consideration what PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch do? Or is it something that you literally have to do and it's just kind of a stupid device that connects through Bluetooth and they leave the rest up to you? Next is connectivity. Does this drop signal? This is an essential thing for any peripheral with your phone, especially gaming. If you take your mobile gaming seriously and this thing is constantly dropping its signal and your phone is constantly trying to reconnect to it, it's not worth a damn. So we need to find out how long this thing can stay connected or if it just stays connected the entire time or if you're just constantly dropping signal. Does it fall asleep and you have to go through a reconnection cycle constantly? What happens? The next thing I look at is latency, or the lack thereof. Now this is directly related to connectivity. If I push a button, how soon do I see a reaction on the screen? This is 
so important to gameplay, and if there's any noticeable latency, it pretty much makes it a useless peripheral and makes it completely and utterly unplayable. I have had several peripherals that you push a button and it's a half second, or a second later you see a reaction. You're not going to play a competitive FPS that way. You're not going to play any game just to entertain yourself that way. That would become far too irritating. Now, there's always latency, but you need to trick us into thinking there isn't. It needs to be faster than we can recognize with our eyes. So, this is probably one of the most important functions of this. The next is length of play. If this thing runs for 15 minutes, it's useless. Let's just face it. So, I need to be able to go through my day of mobile gaming. If I take a train, if I take a bus, and I might not have any time to plug it in and charge it, it needs to last me that long, or there's no sense in me even carrying this around. Portability. I don't think I need to explain this one, but if this is supposed to turn your phone into a more mobile gaming device, it better be fucking portable. It better fit in my pocket, or it's useless. Next is quality, durability, and feel. All of these things. Is this a cheap piece of garbage? How much did they actually copy the Joy-Cons? Did they actually feel like rattly pieces of junk that come from China? Or did they actually learn lessons from the Switch and go, maybe we need to make a little bit more of an effort and make a decent controller that won't break constantly and have lots of drifting and just rip people off and then blame them and make them pay for it to get it repaired until people threaten to sue and then we'll act like we're the nice guys and we'll fucking start fixing it for fucking free and we'll refund your money even though that's the thing we should have done in the first place. Nintendo for that. And finally, overall value. Taking everything into consideration, is it worth it to get this? Does it enhance your gaming experience enough that it is worth it to spend the money on it and carry it around with you? Let's find out. Okay, so let's see what comes with this. Here's the controller that Nintendo will most likely be suing over soon. Tear this piece of plastic out of the way, and you've got your, what looks like the instruction manual. And then beneath that, the... <sighs> three cases that come with it. You know, it's funny, I didn't think about this, but um, this only works with three phones. That's something that never crossed my mind. Um, yeah, Note 10, Razer, and S10 Plus. I have an S10 Plus, this should be my case. Wow, this would have been a short video had I not had one of these phones. Uh, it looks decent enough, plastic. Um, let's just... I'll grab my phone here and see how it fits in. Okay, so it snaps right in, seemingly, but um, I don't know. There's something with how it seats. I'm a little nervous about when I will inevitably drop this, and I'm kind of scared that my phone will pop out of it. So these are much smaller than the Joy-Cons. So that is a very condensed form factor, which concerns me because for me, the Joy-Cons are a little crushed together. All right, I'm going to show you how easy it is to connect these. Uh, you just pop open the app that it tells you to. I pre-downloaded the app and I already connected these through Bluetooth. It was standard affair. It wasn't difficult or anything. No surprises. So when you open this up, you've got a couple of different lists. You click the apps here and you can select different apps on your phone, games, and when you add them, it'll either pop into the recommended or official games, or they'll pop into ones that have not been pre-approved for usage. So I'm going to add a couple of different games here that I already have on my phone. All right, I'm going to add Minecraft. Now, Minecraft I know is not on the pre-approved list. It's down here. So I'm just gonna keep on adding a few so I can show you the difference. Um, and we'll see how it works. Okay, I'm gonna start with a little bit of Metal Slug here um, because mostly I couldn't afford a Neo Geo. And funny enough, I think in Justed for Inflation, the Neo Geo still costs more than my cell phone. So I guess this is gonna be the only way that I'll ever play it because I think Metal Slug costs about $3,000 on eBay right now for the Neo Geo. 
Okay, um, so this is going to be a good game because you have to react quickly and, uh, and it's going to be a great way to check the latency and <laughs> right off the bat I can already tell you I'm not having any issues. I am pushing the button. I suck just as bad at this game as I always have, but it cannot be blamed on any type of latency or control issues. Yeah, I am, um, wow, I am super impressed with this. I, I was not expecting this. I was really expecting to start laughing. So I, I'm actually very surprised at how well this is going. Wow. Of course, this game is on the improved list and it's just one game. So let's check some other ones out. Okay, now we have some Grand Theft Auto 3. And again, it is just working flawlessly. Um, man, I love this game. It, it is just, I can't believe how well it actually reacts. Hang on, I'm gonna get out and shoot some of these motherfuckers here. Let's see how this works. Um, you, I'm gonna jump on you and uh, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna shoot the guy that just looks just like you. And uh, let's see, oh, guy in Hawaiian shirt. How about you? Okay, so you might notice that the lights are blinking. Um, that is actually not happening. That's actually part of the video uh, and it's just an effect of the recording. So I wouldn't concern yourself too much with that. It um, is working fine. I have been playing for a while. I am not getting any issues with connectivity. Again, you can see me pushing the buttons. I have no issues with latency. I have no problems with controls. Um, it controls just about as well as Grand Theft Auto 3 always did, which is pretty poorly. Um, it's still a pain in the ass to turn your car and you still run into everything that you try to avoid. Okay, this will be a simple one, but I just wanted to check it out. This is, uh, of course, Final Fantasy, and I just wanted to try out a quick fight here just to see if I'm noticing any latency. I'm not expecting to. If you can't handle a couple of menu changes, then you're in the wrong business of creating hardware. So, yeah, this is working just fine. So, that's about what I expected. And um, so, I'm super happy because I love playing Final Fantasy, and now I can play it anytime I want. Okay, here's some KOTOR. Um, this was on the list again. I, I'm just trying a bunch of different things. I want to see if I can trip this thing up um, with any of its suggested titles, and so far it's been working just fine. There's good camera control, good reactions. I don't really know how to play this thing with a controller because I always played it on PC, so there's a little bit of a learning curve, but other than that, it works just fine. Okay, so this is a little bit disappointing. Now granted, Doom was not on the suggested app list, but I was really hoping that I could kind of make it work, but it does not function regardless of what I do. I've tried remapping keys, I've tried custom profiles, it just will not operate. I kind of just want to blame Bethesda for this. Um, I feel like this is their doing, so I'm not really ready to blame Razer. And of course, at the same time, uh, they did not suggest to use it on this title. It's just disappointing because this is the reason I wanted to check the Jungle Cat out in the first place. So here's a game that was not on the suggested list and it works perfectly. Uh, this is Minecraft. I'm having absolutely no issues. And uh, I am very excited about this. Again, this is one of those games I just cannot stand playing by touching my screen, just like Doom. I just think it's one of the worst ways to play this type of game, especially when I enjoy playing from first person view. But as you can see, I'm having no issues with latency and I am just absolutely thrilled that this is functioning the way it is. This kind of just makes me blame Bethesda even more for Doom because I didn't have to do anything special. I just opened Minecraft and it worked. So I'm assuming Doom has no controller support at this point. So thanks a lot, Bethesda. You ruined my fucking life. And what the hell? It's on the cover of the fucking box. So let's give Fortnite a try. Now bear with me because this is the first time I've ever actually played this game. So, um... I don't actually know what the hell I'm doing or any of these things flashing on the screen. 
I also haven't seen anyone for five minutes, so I don't know. Oh, there's someone. I have a pickaxe and they have a gun. This seems fair. Let's just, let's go with this. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm dodging. Oh, I'm shot. Oh, I'm hitting them. Nope. No? Yes? Oh, no. Oh, I placed 32nd. And I'm assuming there's 32 people in each match, so great. Now, as I said before, I'm not really comparing these as platforms, but just more in the sense of their portability. So taking a look at these, I mean, the Switch is quite a bit taller. Um, it's got a lot more heft to it, and it takes up a lot more room. Um, the Joy-Cons are so similar looking. I, how the hell Razer thinks they're not going to get sued is beyond me, but that's not really my problem. So the difference in size isn't that huge. And yes, the Nintendo Switch fits in my pocket. And comparatively to the Nintendo Switch Lite, the Razer even takes up more room in its combined form in my pocket. However, ignoring, again, games available for the two, the Razer has two distinct advantages over the Nintendo Switch platform. The first one is that I'm always carrying my cell phone with me. If I want to carry my Switch with me, it's another piece of equipment I have to add on along with my cell phone. With these, I'm only adding the tiny little Joy-Con copies, and that's it. And to me, they don't take up a lot of room. The other advantage is that the Razer is just a lot cheaper. Yes, the Nintendo Switch Lite is $100 cheaper than its full-size counterpart, but that's still a $200 piece of equipment that I've got to carry around in my pocket that I might not necessarily feel comfortable carrying around in my pocket. And again, I'm talking about being in my pocket. I understand I can get a thousand different cases for the Nintendo Switch and it will be protected and I can throw it off of a mountaintop, but I don't carry a bag everywhere I go. I put things in my jacket pocket. So for my personal use, the Razer is a much better way to pass my time. So what do I think? I actually really like it. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely fucking not. But it does do what it sets out to do, and that's enhance my mobile gaming experience. But it, that does not mean it doesn't come with a lot of issues that you need to take in consideration. Right off the bat, if you don't have an S10+, Plus, a Note 10+, Plus, or a Razer mobile gaming phone, whatever the fuck that is, you're out of luck. Doesn't come with a case for it. I don't know what kind of idea that was, or if they plan to release more cases, but I'm assuming that if this thing takes off or is popular, that third parties will take care of the case issue no problem. Speaking of the case, you give me the option for a desktop mode, which was great. You pop these apart, you put them together, and they create a singular controller. However, you left out a kickstand on the case which is baffling to me. Of course, I could fix this with a couple of bucks on Amazon, but why the hell did you only follow through with half an idea or half a function? It's baffling. Speaking of the case as well, I've been using it for over two weeks. I've had no issues with it. And believe me, I drop my phone about every 15 fucking minutes. So it's been through the ringer. It still works. It still holds these things into their slots pretty easily. Oh, there we go. Um, I had no connectivity issues. You open the app, you turn on your Bluetooth, and you're off you go. And with that, I saw no latency issues. Uh, even with games like Minecraft that aren't on the official list, it worked fine and I saw no problems. I did see some kind of screw ups while I was playing Adventure of Link, but that very well could be an issue with the emulator I chose and not the peripheral. So I can't officially say what the issue was there. The reduced form factor, however, was a bit of an issue. After two hours of gameplay straight, my thumbs were in severe pain. However, for me, this isn't a big problem because I'm not going to play a mobile game for two hours. It's going to be 20, 30 minutes. And speaking of that, 
I played Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, uh, Fortnite for over two hours and I did not have to charge this thing. So I'm happy with the length of play. Uh, but when you do run out of power, there is an issue that I found. Both of these need their own separate USB-C connection to charge. Now, when you add in the fact that your phone needs one as well, that's going to mean three wires to charge the entire thing. For me, I've got them all over the place. It's not such a big deal. These did not take long to charge up anyway. But for other people, that might be a problem. You saw the portability. Even in this mode, it's fine. And when I take into consideration, I always have my phone on me. This is not a problem to carry around these two little guys. For me, the price tag would not have been a huge, is not a huge deal. I've enjoyed it. Um, yes, it is a little high, but I'm getting so much joy and use out of this. The $99 price tag is no issue. So do with that what you want. So. If you decided that that's not for you or that's not what you're looking for or you don't own one of the three phones, well, you're in luck because I'm also reviewing its big brother, the Razer Raiju. Check out the next video to see what I think about this thing. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while and finally got around to it. I actually wanted it out before Christmas, but uh, I guess I beat it by one day. Uh, the Razer Raiju video will be out soon, um, along with several other videos I plan on doing of new and old tech reviews. I also do live streams on this channel. So if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Thanks for watching.